Not every card that comes out is broken, but by the same token, not every card that looks terrible is actually destined for the bulk bin either. That is a lesson I had to take to heart recently, as I realized that I'd been totally wrong about the new Ancient Garurumon support out of BT-17. What looked to me like a lazy and restrictive tribal deck turned into one of the most customizable archetypes that the game has seen since the likes of Numemon. So today I want to explore some of the different ways that people have built Ancient Garurumon and talk about why the deck is as flexible as it is. Now, I have to admit that the initial reveals for the BT-17 Ancient Garurumon line had me feeling pretty bummed out and confused. I am a big Blue Hybrids fan, and the aspect of the deck that I love more than anything is how flexible it is. The Tommy hybrids, Koji hybrids, and Aquatic hybrids can all mix together alongside most generic blue support to create a highly adaptable and customizable meta archetype. Love Hex of Laumon? You can build blue hybrids that way. Mirage Galgamon is your boy? Well, we've done that too. Seraphimon Ace? I mean, sure, why not? But the BT-17 Ancient Garurumon support kind of did away with that. While Koji is still blue as can be, both Lobomon and Kendo Garurumon arrived as yellow-blue Digimon, with a fat 3 Evo cost over their respective colors for actual rookies, and a 2 Evo cost over Koji, or a yellow Tamer. This basically made it too janky to splash in Tommy or really any other blue tamers and have them fulfill the role of resource and stack builder. You are all in on Koji now. Or, I guess, Zoe, too. But the devil is in the details. Sure, you're kinda stuck with Koji, and you'd really prefer not to Evo on your blue or yellow rookies, but Ancient Garurumon makes the whole package worth it. You can essentially combine Kendo and Lobo in a fancy combo to warp into Ancient Garurumon, who then recurs a hybrid and a tamer to hand, and then plays a tamer on deletion, all while bouncing one of your opponent's bodies and effectively burning their top security. Discerning players realized that alongside the then unrestricted Ukomon brothers, you could play any color base that you want, while Koji and his line were still able to effectively carry out their own game plan. This has led to Ancient Garurumon decks with bases ranging from red to purple to even black and green recently, each bringing access to a variety of powerful tools to take on the meta. We'll start things off with the fairly vanilla blue base. This is realistically the base which gives you the best route to actually building a stack if needed, and by extension, using the inheritables of your rookies. The name of the game is essentially to spam Koji over and over again, and provide you with multiple outlets to get to Ancient Garurumon, ensuring that you can play on every turn. Both of the Strabimons will help you cheat Koji into play, either on the swing or on deletion, and of course, they are fantastic searchers as well. The promo Lobomon is actually usable here, and I'm a big fan of this card personally, so it's great that it can put in as much work as it does, essentially setting up two Kojis by the time either Strabimon Inheritable and Ancient Garurumon's effects resolve. Oh, and one recurring theme that you'll see throughout these lists is the presence of Zoe and Jet Selfie Mon. Since you do have access to the yellow side of the hybrid pool, Zoe helps dig for your pieces, while Jet Selfie Mon provides quick healing and a cheap Evo into Ancient Garurumon. I mean, honestly, there's no reason, almost no reason, not to play them. And there's not much more to say here about the blue base specifically. It's Koji Turbo. Simple as. The red base is a very different route, obviously. Since you're not going to be building a stack, you're basically looking for two things from your rookies, card draw and board control. What red base does best is floodgate the opponent and allow you to play into a wider field. A Gotsumon in particular is a fantastic floodgate, shutting down a ton of decks that want to spam the board, while Solarmon severely slows down a lot of Digicross decks, among other things. Crimson Blaze complements them both, ensuring a board wipe of smaller bodies while also floodgating any type of Digimon board spam. 
What I like about the red base is that it can kind of play a security control light game, depending on your option suite, of course. Kendo and Lobo being partly yellow gives you access to Magna Angemon Ace, who can out enemy floodgates and then stack your security with those powerful option cards like Crimson Blaze, Trident Gaia, and Heaven's Judgment. You can also Evo the Angel up into the Ancient to better protect him against overflow inducing removal. Finally, it just has to be said that Neutromon is an absolute godsend. Basically, when one of your red Digimon swings face, you draw a card. So alongside the BT14 Coromon, you just print cards and see your combo pieces. The added flexibility over the old promo Geomon package is much appreciated. Purple Base is one of the weirder variants. And to be fair, I played a more vanilla version of it in testing. But essentially, you're swapping the floodgating of red and the tamer spam of blue base for more consistent access to your pieces and the ability to extend your plays. Your purple rookies essentially exist to filter cards, drawing and trashing them so that they can be available later on. See, Ancient Gururumon's floating effect will let you fetch back a hybrid and a tamer and then play a tamer out. So, if it's not the right time to play Koji, you can just bin him with your Purple Digitama's draw and discard effect and essentially get that free draw and still have access to Koji later on. Ancient Guardian Deities fulfills a similar role, making good use of that trash setup to digicross into Ancient Garurumon for cheap or just play a Koji for two and pass over less memory. Purple Matt, who is a fairly common presence in Ancient Garurumon lists, also plays a much bigger role here. You are swinging more aggressively with your rookies, and when they get deleted, he nets you back a memory, effectively ensuring that you always have enough memory to combo off and warp into the Ancient. I will note here that I personally went with Schwarzler Sots as my purple removal of choice, mostly to deal with wide boards that Crimson Blaze might not necessarily reach but you could just as easily splash in a small Leviamon package to inflict considerable pain and suffering on the matchups that Gotsumon usually stalls out in the red base. Now, I don't have too much data on the green, yellow, and black bases of Ancient Garurumon, but here's what I've gleaned from discussions with other players. Green base is essentially an idea borrowed from Numemon players. You take advantage of starter deck Lopmon to give alliance to your hybrids, allowing Ancient Garurumon and even just Kendo Garurumon to get in multiple checks for effectively free. You could probably splash in Cherubimon Ace thanks to its yellow access, and using the starter deck Terriermon to cheat him out, EX7 Shoto Kazama could turn your Ukomons or Digicrossed Ancients into blockers as well. Yellow base presumably can play the Floodgate game with access to Pillowmon as your Gotsumon reskin, Cutemon to frustrate training options, and the old Salomon for a quick heal alongside some chip damage. I personally tried a Pulsemon yellow base, since Leon Alexander and his Mind Link skill allow for a reusable memory setter under your hybrids, and can give a quick heal or memory when paired with BT17 Pulsemon. But it's pretty bad, especially since none of the BB Mons really do anything for the deck as a whole. Black base is just a straight up mystery to me. Presumably, Chumon and Chikuri Mon put in work. Uh, the weird Kokua Mon floodgate from BT8 actually comes up now, too, so I imagine that that also sees play. But that's really it. Maybe splash in some black options for D Digivolution, and you're good to go. I think. But if there is one base that I find absolutely fascinating, it's one that was cooked up by a friend of the channel, Used Orange. It's not yellow, it's not red, well, not really. It's red-yellow Marcus Damon base. The Marcus Damon base essentially incorporates the red-yellow Agumons and their companion Tamer to get access to both the red option suite more consistent access to yellow security bombs, and of course, the extra aggression provided by Marcus himself. I was surprised to find out that the memory setter Marcus was the go-to, at least at first, 
but it makes sense alongside BT-13 Agumon, who costs 3 to play, and can immediately turn that Memory Setter Marcus into a Digimon, allowing him to swing and net back a memory, and apply some light DP reduction while he's at it. It's a really creative build, and it just reinforces how flexible the new Ancient Garurumon package is. And to be clear, uh, what you're seeing here is my post-ban take on Used Orange's original list. In particular, I kept his clever use of Odin's Breath to save you in a pinch, Trident Gaia, and the Taikari Dual Tamer to just absolutely go ham with printing memory. It's a fun list. Like, seriously, uh, must try. I think this video is basically a reminder that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Or rather, you shouldn't get so wrapped up in what you want a card or a deck to be, and instead, look at what it's really capable of. Now, most of the time your instincts will be right, but it's important to give things a second glance every now and then. You know, Ancient Garurumon proved to be one of the craziest pile decks out there, and outside of a direct hit to the wolf himself, it's probably going to continue reinventing itself for potentially years to come. No, it's not Blue Hybrid, it's something else. It's something... special.